Hello everyone, this is Heather and I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to share with you a process video of a layout I'm going to create. And the picture that I'm using is this photo from our wedding and we are lighting the unity candle here. Um, so that's what my story is going to be about. I'm also using a um, sketch and this is from sketchsavvy.blogspot.com and it's sketch number 90 which is from a couple years ago actually but this is what it looks like on my blog I'll also insert this photo if you'd like a better view of it but it features one 4x6 photo which is what I'm using here sorry the color just went funny because it's focusing on my screen but I'm also using a bunch of little hexagons which I had the privilege to cut out using my friend Karen's um, it's a brother what is it called a brother scan and cut I believe and her machine is really awesome it's similar to a silhouette but it has a few different functions so she let me cut out these hexagons we decided to do this sketch challenge together but I didn't quite finish so I got these cut out and I'm going to record the rest of my process for you and I'm using mainly the fancy free collection by Pink Paisley, which I just shared in a haul video. I was lucky enough to find the paper pad and a couple of the embellishment pieces that go with it, so I'll be using those as well. These other two papers are from Michaels, and they're just the Recollections brand, the Thin Papers, which I shared in a haul recently as well. And I'm going to try and try to incorporate this stencil. It's a chicken wire mini chicken wire stencil from the crafters workshop and this is new as well so I'll see if I can work that in and I hope you enjoy my process okay so I am just going through my papers and I'm trimming out the sizes that I need according to the sketch this one I believe I trimmed it at um, maybe about six inches wide by ten inches tall something like that anyway maybe it's a bit wider than six and this one I'm trimming at six and a half by seven inches and I'm just sort of judging based on what I think the sketch proportions look like and I have it handy on my phone there so that I can refer to it as I go this strip of paper I already had cut and I believe it's probably three inches wide and I will trim it down later to the length that I need. Here I'm just using some paper to mat my photo on and I'm actually using printer paper. It's a slightly higher quality than I use for document printing but it's not cardstock by any means and I just like um, using that instead of cardstock so that I can save that for things that I need a little more weight to them. And I'm just rearranging these hexagons, and I have a photo on my phone of the way that I initially arranged them, and then I ran out of time and had to pack up, so I'm just recreating that arrangement. And I did change it up a little bit um, from what I had, just because I preferred pattern different patterns beside each other, so I didn't want any similar patterns or colors too close to each other and that's kind of just what I'm basing it on and I'm doing the same thing in this small three hexagon cluster. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a bit weird I've had some throat issues today but hopefully it's fine. So now I'm just going to adhere everything together and I ran out of my Teresa Cullen's tape runner refill so I need to get another refill for that and instead I'm just using this strip adhesive which I think I actually got from the dollar store it was fairly inexpensive but I still prefer to get a brand name product just because I know it'll be it'll last longer I'm guessing anyways so I'm using this tape now on the back here to adhere those layers together and I'm not being super generous with it I just use basically a strip wherever I need it and I'm doing this because I know that I might want to tuck things in or staple things to these layers later so I'm leaving myself a bit of leeway room for doing those things later on in my process and I'm just adhering that to the background the background paper that I used as you can see is pink 
checker on the back and I didn't really like that pattern so I just figured I'd use the back as a white cardstock. It was a heavy enough weight for that anyway. So here I've rearranged all my hexagons again and I'm just putting the ones that have words on them up on foam and the foam that I'm using came in one of those kids craft kits and so I'm just it's self-adhesive foam cut into weird shapes so I'm putting those shapes and then adding some glossy accents to the non-adhesive side of the foam and it works out really well for me anyways so now I'm just using my glue stick to adhere the rest of those hexagons and I tried my best to make sure that where they overlapped the edges of the paper it wasn't right on the edge um, or it lined up straight with the edge at least and those ones that dark one that I just glued is actually pretty much straight in line with the edge of the paper which I like. My phone just lit up there and I wanted to share this with you but I had a request to do a fancy free process layout as I was recording this video so I thought it was really funny. Um, now I'm using my stencil and I'm misting it with my gold Heidi Swap color shine and I'm just putting the stencil face down um, with the misted side face down on the paper and then just using a scrap piece of paper to rub the back and sort of press it in. It's almost like a stamp and I'm being careful not to smudge it while I lift up the stencil. And so that's kind of the effect that I got, which I really like. So I gave it a thumbs up. <laughs> and I also like the other, the normal use of the stencil, so I didn't want to waste all the rest of that mist so as you saw I just laid it over top of my art journal and I'll use that as a background for something so here I just went through all my stash of sequins and picked out a few colors that I like and now I'm performing some quick letter surgeries on these thickers they're American crafts and they're in the font root beer float I think that's what it's called and they're sort of a vinyl like a thick vinyl which is kind of cool but they're kind of gummed up on the back on these letters because they are quite old so I just adhered them using some glossy accents but I don't show that part I just thought you should know so the N in the word unity I actually cut from a W and the U I cut from an M so uh, as I've said before I just like to get creative with my letters because I'm always trying to get the most out of them so here I just found some Echo Park um, letter stickers and I didn't have an E so again I'm just using my white gel pen and turning a 1 into an E by adding three little sticks to it and I like how that looks um, the blue color matches the blue in some of the other papers um, even though it doesn't match that green color that I put it on so it kind of ties it together I guess and here I'm just going to go through all the ephemera and figure out a few pieces that I like. Um, I found that one that says something about I love your smile and then I found one that says wonderful day. That one's a acetate piece which I love. And then I found my last two hearts in this pack. I really liked using those hearts. And they are half silver foil so that was fun and added a bit of shine to the page and I'm just gonna go through all the rest of them see if there's anything else I want but because I was trying to stick to my blue and green color scheme I didn't really want to add in too many colors like the word smile and actually the words wonderful day have all the colors of the collection but I just thought I'd keep it simple other than that so here I'm um, punching some stars out of that piece of green paper. It's the one with the little plus signs and it's kind of ombre. And I punched out five stars in this green color because I knew I wanted to use that green heart, but I didn't really have any other green on the page. So I added green by doing this. And I quite like how it came out. It was just kind of a little pop of green, which is nice. And I cut the hole off of that acetate piece. It was meant to be kind of like a tag, like if you added string into the hole. But I just cut it off and stapled it on. And this is what I was talking about, why I didn't add too much adhesive to that piece. Because I still 
was able to get my stapler in underneath there. So now I'm just adding a bit more adhesive because I stapled it a bit tight so the acetate was actually pulling up on the paper, which I didn't want. So I managed to fix that a little bit. And now I'm just adhering the rest of the stars. Oh, that heart I put up on foam squares. The stars, I'm just using glossy accents to stick down. That's what I had available. And then I'm going to add staples to a couple of the stars as well. This banner, I'm just adding some foam to. Sorry, I'm off screen. And adding some glossy accents. But before I stick that down, I realized that I wanted to put a staple in this star. So I did that just so that I could more easily get my stapler in there. Then glued the photo down a little more, added that banner, and besides gluing all the things down, I'm also going to be adding sequins, which you can see I've picked out some colors beside there. Um, and I like, I'm into the sequins right now because they're cheaper than enamel dots and I have a lot more selection of them, so it's really fun to do that and I'll, I think I'll do it again. I this might actually be the first time I've used sequins on a page. For some reason, I have this childhood issue with sequins because they make me think of dance outfits, and I was never into dance. I did a skating routine once where I had to wear a sequiny costume, and it was horrifying for me as a child, so sequins kind of annoy me, and they make me think of itchy clothing, but... I like them. I'm getting more into them because I like them in this use, not so much on clothes. Though I do have a sequin shirt that I do like now because it's gold. Anyways, that's just my sequin history. <laughs> so I'm kind of just sprinkling those around the page, not taking too much, um, not putting too much thought into the placement, but I try to keep the colors kind of dispersed and use, um, my design eye, I guess, to put them in appealing groups. I've got three kind of embellishment clusters going on there. You can see they're in a bit of a triangle, a visual triangle. And I just added some Heidi Swap Color Shine splats, and that's in gold. And even though I use silver sequins and their silver foil on some of the pieces, I don't mind mixing gold and silver in this case. And now I'm just going to adhere the journaling that I wrote out. I hand wrote it, but cut it out on strips because that was kind of the only way it would show up on these busy patterns. But I, and actually that's how it's shown in the sketch too. And I like how this turned out. Um, and I'm just using, again, glossy accents to put that down. It's the only sort of fine line I have. And now I'm just going to stamp the date, which of course is our wedding date, and I just stamped it off four times so that it would fade out a little bit. Alright, that is my layout. I just have to trim off this little piece, and I'm going to call this done. I really enjoyed following this sketch. It's a little bit well, actually a lot unique from what I probably would have created otherwise. So I really like these shapes. I liked how I decided to use sequins instead of enamel dots this time because I have a bigger selection of sequins and they are way cheaper than enamel dots. So I liked that. Um, I probably would have changed this writing just to black pen because it would go with the photo, but instead I used a marker... Um, by Stampin' Up, and this is in the color Not Quite Navy, so it does go with this color, but um, yeah, I maybe would have made it a bit more bold, but that's okay. I really like how this turned out overall, and I hope that you enjoyed watching my process. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Um, I'll leave links in the description box to my blog. I hope you check that out. I'll have more detailed photos there. And if you would like, please go check me out on Instagram and Pinterest. I am staybeautiful84 over on both of those as well, exact same as it is here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you again so much for watching. I truly appreciate it, and I hope you have a great week.